Welcome to Crimson Guitars and welcome to some insanity. Okay, so I don't like clickbait. You guys are children of the internet age, uh, as am I, and there is just far too much clickbaity stuff online, and especially on YouTube. Everybody and their grandmother is turning bowls out of freaking pencils, for example. And it looks quite cool the first two or three times. But, and this is done really well. What's the point? Um, resin is another thing. Everybody uses resin. Turned bowls for resin, river tables, etc. One guy did it very, very well, and now everybody's doing it. And that's fair enough. It's kind of like when you were a kid at school and all of your friends said, oh, you've got to listen to this album. Uh, or, we've, oh, or have you watched the latest episode of Knight Rider? I am that old. Um, and nine times out of 10, I would kid myself into saying, I'm not going to watch that or listen to that because everybody else likes it and I want to be cool and different and hold myself back just a little bit, you know. Yeah, I'm beyond that, I'm, I'm reading uh, Voltaire or... <laughs> I've never read Voltaire. Um, anyhow, I am going full clickbait this year. I am going to build a guitar out of resin and pencils. I am going to start using resin and I'm going to do, what are they called, the waterfall table? Waterfall tables, I'm going to do a waterfall guitar. People have been saying we need to put resin uh, in one of our copper, uh, copper rotter guitars forever. And one of you fantastic, beautiful people, here we go, came to my tool shop with this. I nearly dropped it. I need, that could have been painful. Bog oak. Bog oak! And uh, this is three and a half thousand years old. They had it uh, uh, tested. And I am going to make a copper rotted guitar out of that. And I'm going to fill the chasm with resin and probably put a couple of LEDs in there to shine it up and make it look cool. Because despite the fact that everybody's doing these things, they do look cool. So why not? There's no reason. Anyhow, today, today is my first proper experiment or proper use of resin uh, ever, really. I'm just quickly going back through the last 15 years of making. Uh, I, I've done the odd little bits and pieces, but nothing of note or serious. <sighs> or well. Uh, anyhow, this isn't going to be particularly beautiful. I lie, it is going to be utterly stunning, but that's not because of the resin. That is because it is this guitar. And uh, this beast is something that I've been working on for, for far too long. Uh, spalted beach and uh, with an ebony through neck and the top and the caps on the headstock front and back are California Buckeye Bowl, which is particularly soft. I am going to have to flood this guitar in resin, uh, just in order to solidify the spalted beach and the California Buckeye Bowl. Uh, there's just not quite, it's not quite solid enough. I, the specs call for uh, gloss finish everywhere but the neck. Um, we're gonna have to do some lacquer of some sort and this substrate just isn't good enough. And I thought, what the hell, I'm gonna mess around with resin and uh, we're there. The problem is, I need to figure out how to do it. I have scales, particularly little scales. Uh, it seems that every single set of scales in the Crimson Guitars Empire has broken recently. So yeah, more on the way. And uh, this is a Axom Epilam 2017 epoxy resin system. I'm not sure. Why? Two-part resin. Uh, this is the stuff that we have in-house. 
people have been using it downstairs for various bits and pieces recently. And uh, there we go. So I'm going to mix precisely about a quarter of a cup and uh, flood the top. Now, the query is, or the problem is, I have to also flood the backs and sides. And the sides of a guitar are causing some issues. Uh, with the top, what I'm going to do is put masking tape around the top and then flood that. I'm not sure how I'm going to do the sides. Put it in a clamp at that angle and then just do that bit, or possibly just paint it on in a very thin solution uh, and hopefully it floods in and we're okay. Uh, we're just doing the top in this video though, because that's easy. So put the guitar away. And we're going on. Okay. I just had images of that uh, bog oak falling and decapitating my toe. Did you know that there's uh, such a thing as spontaneous um, auto amputation where just randomly your toe decides to fall off. And the cool thing about it is that it op it's often your big toe, but it happens to both big toes at the same time. That is cool. Okay. I don't know why I keep on hitting the bench. We have a pot. We have some scales. Gloves. I probably should be wearing a gas mask as well because I should be. Let me have a look. PPE, do not rip your gloves like that. I'm going to make myself a really cool leather apron at some point, probably on, on my other channel. That's a good idea. There we go. Project for the weekend workshop channel. Um, working with leather. Okay, safety, safety, safety. Contact with eyes, skin, respiration, sensitization. Okay, that's cool. Seriously, read these things. Uh, I am actually going to wear goggles. And I have a mask. Where are my goggles? Dag, damn it. Whoa, behind the camera. Hold on, there's some on the lathe. Okay. So, obviously I'm not going to be able to talk for a bit, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix 100 resin to 30 hardener, 10 to 3, and uh, well, I want roughly a quarter of a cup, so I'm just going to wing it from here, and uh, no, no I'm not, no I'm not. I got too excited, I'm really enjoying filming today. What I need to do first, before I do any of this, is put some masking tape around the top of the guitar and burnish that down. So I put the guitar away and did all of that, moved the camera and took the nice shot and all that. <sighs> Erroneously. Okay. <clears throat> we don't need very much. I seem to not have fingernails. I, I, I don't know. Success. Uh, we don't need much of the masking tape lifting up over the edge of the guitar. Just uh, five mil or so. And uh, I hear you asking, why are you bothering to do that when you are going to end up covering the entire guitar anyway. And uh, on end grain, if you put some finish on one part of the end grain and then leave it to dry and cure and go back later, it will often leave witness marks. You don't want that. So uh, yeah, I'm going to do it very carefully in sections if at all possible. And it's possible. Yeah. Thank you. 
I do have a bevel on the edge rather than a round over and uh, that might end up causing some issues. I want a nice hard line really. I am going to be sanding most of this away. There we go. Done. Done and done. Okay, move the guitar. Yo. Let's see. Viscous. Woo. Precision in all things. I don't know. How dead would you kill me if I splash resin onto your new camera? <laughs> okay, I need to carry on and I can't do that with the mask on. Um, I'm, I just can't. So, one guitar. Uh, I'm actually gonna not use the uh, fantastically made premium crimson guitars rockin neck rest <laughs> every opportunity to advertise our fantastic wares uh, I'm not going to use that because I want the guitar to be flat and uh, I'm going to slowly pour well actually let's just see how I've got a little bit on the palette knife, palette knife here enunciate properly so and I want to see what that does um, how that reacts I'm obviously not worried about bubbles because of this current application I would have done that a lot slower and with more care if I was actually trying for a clear something anyway Alive. Ah, yeah, baby. So this is more than just Buckeye Burl. This is Buckeye Burl with a modern radius carve, um, and uh, inside all of the burly bits, I have inlaid uh, sterling silver bits.
I love this bit. Just so cool. So you can see on this bit here, where it's sunk into the wood, and that's, you know, that's all, my, in fact, that is touch dry there. So uh, I need to get more so that I've got an even surface and uh, flood there. Anyhow, stop filming. I want to put my mask on. So uh, I'm going to carry on doing this. Um, and uh, I'm going to put my, my gas mask on thing and uh, um, do that whole PPE dance again. And uh, I might end up putting a little bit more on here, but essentially, well, actually, that's it. Um, this is the process. <sighs> I'm going to have to let this cure and then come back in two or three or, or more days actually, sand it all down. You don't want to see that process. Everybody knows what it's like sanding stuff down. Um, it is relatively toxic, so I will be wearing a mask uh, and all of that jazz and full dust extraction. I'll do that downstairs. Um, and the end result will be a solidified, uh, beautiful top. And in fact, the whole guitar. Now, uh, there are other methods that you could use to achieve the same results, but uh, none of them are quite as uh, effective as a good two-part epoxy resin. So, there we go. Thanks for watching. Click like and subscribe. Uh, please consider supporting our Patreon. And most importantly, comment. Let me know what you think, and let me know if you have any preferred techniques for solidifying uh, particularly soft wood that you're working with. Um, there are, there are, there are many. So, uh, yeah, get the comments going. Thanks for watching. Um, I really need to get my mask on, so go away. Cheerio. Bye. See ya. Ta-ta. Ta-ta.